a warm welcome to all of you, our dear audience and fellow colleagues. I am Dr. Rajesh Swarnakar, consultant pulmonologist at Getwell Hospital and Research Institute, Nagpur, and a referee for today's debate. So to set the context, one should know that mechanical properties of the lung are important determinants as well as indicators of lung function. And thus they help in the diagnosis and monitoring of several lung disorders. And of these disorders, as we all know, the most common are obstructive AV diseases that afflict almost 10% of the world population and numbers may be even higher in India due to indoor and outdoor pollution. So asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are responsible for the bulk of obstructive AV disease burden. So far, spirometry is the most commonly performed lung function test in clinical practice and is considered to be gold standard diagnostic test for obstructive AV disease. However, the forceful expiratory and inspiratory maneuvers of spirometry require patient's cooperation and physical capacity that is usually lacking in young children below four years of age, elderly, and those with physical and cognitive limitations. Other than technical difficulties, there are also some fundamental limitations of spirometry that we will hear in this debate. So thus, measuring lung function in patient not only helps establishing a correct diagnosis, but also monitors patient lung health over time. So in either case, one assumes that the measurement renders a correct assessment of the respiratory system. And that measurements are reproducible with the minimal variation between repeat measurements, yet sensitive enough to detect changes in lung status over time and it should be predictive of meaningful outcomes. Furthermore, the technique should be feasible to use in a wide range of patients population, including preschool children, the elderly and people with also disabilities. The measurement should also provide the clinician with a clear understanding of what part of the respiratory system is affected. So how today's standard the spirometry lives up to these prerequisites or is it going to fall for another technique that is gaining rapid strides the oscillometry of the airways and lung well i am too eager to know this as you are and hence we have two great orators as debaters who will dwell on this issue putting up their arguments in favor of spirometry or airway oscillometry on the topic of today's debate, will airway oscillometry replace spirometry soon? So it's my privilege today to welcome Dr. Atri Gangopadhyay, consultant pulmonologist at Pulse Hospital, Rachi, who will be speaking for the motion and countering it would be Dr. Nitin Abhyankar, chest physician and interventional pulmonologist at Pune Hospital in Pune. So I would first invite Dr. Atri to put up his pro debate, which will be followed by the con debate by Dr. Nitin. Uh, we will then give them opportunity to have some rebuttals against each other's arguments and final arguments at the end of which we will address also opinions and queries from the audience who can actually pose them as this debates go on. All these will be resolved by our respective debaters, following which we will have our final concluding remarks. So let the show begin. Over to you, Dr. Atri. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Rajesh, sir, for the very kind invite. I am very thrilled to 
take part in a debate where Rajeshwar is the moderator or referee because I remember first time in Napcon Ahmedabad where I personally was fortunate enough to attend a debate where Rajeshwar presented a topic on technology in medical science and the whole audience was spellbound. None of the audience moved during sir. So I'm very thrilled that Rajesh sir gave me the opportunity to be a referee in my debate. Also, I am very thrilled that the other side, I am facing Dr. Nitin Abhyankar. I remember at CCI Pune, Dr. Nitin Abhyankar had presented such a wonderful debate in lung biopsy and ILDs that the whole hall, live audience was spellbound. So basically, I want to acknowledge Dr. N.H. Krishna sir and Chess Council of India for the opportunity. And I thank my patients for enabling me to the pioneer of oscillometry in our state of Jharkhand. Uh, this is my lab where I have a impulse oscillometry, I have a pheno, I have a diffusion, DLCO also. So this is a case scenario where a 70-year-old gentleman is coming with breathing difficulty or effort and a dry cough, both are gradually progressive. He is a current smoker with a 25-pack year exposure. Initial cardiovascular examination, including echocardiography is normal. So what should be my investigation of choice to confirm a diagnosis? Based upon the symptoms, exposure, we would all want this to be a case of COPD. So obviously, we would want to do a PFT or spirometry. What happens in real life? Despite good demonstration, he is unable to give an acceptable valid spirometry even after eight attempts. And too many failed attempts, we are unable to do a proper acceptable interpretable spirometry. So can we try another way? Second scenario, a mentally retarded 15 years boy is suffering from recurrent seasonal cough. Again, a cardiology exam and echo are normal. We have ruled out congenital heart disease. So obviously we are suspecting asthma and we would want to do a spirometry to look for reversibility. But the patient being mentally retarded is unable to understand the instructions. One answer to both the scenarios is oscillometry or sonar technology in the lungs. I uh, tell my patients that this is basically sonar technology in the lungs that certain sound vibrations will come from here which will go into our lungs and give an echo. And I believe that oscillometry is going to replace spirometry soon. This is the topic of my debate today. Please look at these two words. One is replace and the other is soon. Here is a picture of the Indian cricket team where we don't know that who will replace the current captain soon or near or far. So similarly, I believe that oscillometry is going to replace spirometry soon. Currently, Pulmonologists are most talked about and sought about after the worst pandemic in human history. I'm sure everyone here will agree with that. The next decade in medical science will be ruled by pulmonologists and innovations will first focus on pulmonary medicine. Obviously, we will have to rethink our traditional practice and innovate ourselves. The existing diseases may need to be redefined and re-diagnosed by newer and better modalities that may offer better treatment. And isolated diseases will be replaced by disease syndromes with considerable overlaps and gray areas. We have already seen in obstructive airway disease, there is an overlap. Sleep syndromes, there is overlap. So we don't know how many more overlaps will come. There is an overlap in ILD, fibrosis, emphysema, etc. So some points where impulse or airway oscillometry is better than spirometry. And these are not my words, but this is proven evidence. Age independence, intelligence independence, as I mentioned in the scenario, technique independence. Look at these two photographs. This is in my own clinic. This is a gentleman, 90 years gentleman, where I was able to perform oscillometry. This is a four months baby where the pediatrician requested and I was able to perform an oscillometry. So it is truly age independent. It is truly technique or maneuver independent. Certain fallacies that are bypassed by newer technology. This is how an acceptable or valid spirometry looks like. But there are various artifacts or various errors where a spirometry becomes unacceptable. So these fallacies are bypassed by this newer technology. Chronic respiratory patient may actually cough during the test. Oscillometry, no effect in the spirometry. Please cancel the effort and repeat the effort. 
demonstration of reversibility if we go back to simple physics or basic physiology airway narrowing is proportional to volume or radius to the power 3 but airway resistance is inversely proportional to radius to the power 4 wherever there is an increased power the factor increases thus reversibility is better appreciated on oscillometry compared to spirometry and this actually solves the dilemma of poor reversibility in any in many patients on spirometry. Post-COVID era, there is a huge scare regarding aerosol generation. I admit, we all should admit that for a very long period of time, we had to stop our spirometries. So, lesser with oscillometry due to tidal breathing. You don't want someone to blow so hard that there is so much aerosol generation, which is not there in oscillometry due to tidal breathing. Spurious bronchoconstriction. A maximum inspiratory maneuver in a spirometry can cause spurious bronchoconstriction, leading to false values in a spirometry, misleading us towards the diagnosis, which is obviated in oscillometry due to tidal breathing, no forced breathing. This is a genuine scenario. What if my spirometry is normal, but I am having symptoms? This gentleman was a hero of a World Cup. And during this whole World Cup, he was battling a chest disease, which later we came to know that it was a tumor. But spirometry is normal, but patient is having symptoms. Due to penetration to deeper and smaller airways, oscillometry will give earlier abnormal report compared to a spirometry. And direct results of smaller airways or bronchiolitis, which was always a diagnostic dilemma with prior investigations. Redefining a disease and guiding treatment. We all are worried that every year gold is bringing a new update on COPD and we need to forget the previous update and memorize the new update. And sometimes they bring two updates in a year. Earlier, not very long ago, gold had labeled COPD as irreversible. But nowadays gold boldly says that COPD is treatable. Why? Spirometry had given us a concept of fixed airflow limitation in COPD that however well you treat the patient, however well you manage the symptoms, the FEV1 by FVC ratio shall always be below a certain predefined limit or a certain lower limit of normal for the population. But as we explore more and more oscillometry in COPD, maybe this concept of fixed airflow limitation be discarded. So we shall actually be redefining a disease and guiding treatment accordingly. One test for various pathologies. There is a very famous movie, Lord of the Rings, where there was this dialogue that one ring to rule them all. What if, if you have one test to diagnose them? That is what Oscillometry is both obstruction and restriction. The R or resistance is a wonderful measure of obstruction and reversibility. The X or the reactance component is still under study and more negative X can mean air trapping. Look at the left lower corner. More positive X can mean ILD, interstitial stiffness. Look at the right lower corner. So the reactance component can give us a measure of restriction also. And voila, small airways. As I had already told before, small airways were very difficult to study by various excellent modalities. But nothing can get simpler than this on an oscillometry where they directly give you a small airway index with grading. As simple as that. No derivations. No indirect measurements. Some increasingly common disease where oscillometry may be the diagnostic answer. Why I am telling increasingly common? Maybe few years or one or two decades ago, these diseases were not so common. But nowadays, all of us see lots of these diseases. Air pollution related lung disease, rarer forms of occupational lung disease. I work at Ranchi, Jharkhand, where I see so many rarer forms of occupational lung disease increasingly common. Drug induced lung disease. There are lots of cancer survivors who take good cancer medicine, who may, may survive episodes of radiation and then land up with lung disease. Transplant patients, thanks to better understanding of transplant biology, transplant survival is increasing and people with radius transplant are actually surviving one or two decades. It may be kidney, it may be heart, it may be lung. So 
transplant patients and early lung involvement in rheumatology. As the rheumatology diagnostics are becoming more better, so many undiagnosed chronic mysterious pathologies are getting diagnosed or relabeled as rheumatology pathology. So early lung involvement in rheumatology. So these are such in situations which were not so common before, which are common now, where oscillometry may be the diagnostic answer. Okay. These were my arguments regarding replacement. That yes, I believe oscillometry would replace spinometry. Next sentence. Please remember the sentence of today's debate. Will oscillometry replace spirometry soon? So let us come to how spirometry is over 100 years old. Even oscillometry is not very new. 1956, first time, forced oscillometry. 1970s, first time, impulse oscillometry. That's over 60 years old. So why was this debate not held when oscillometry was introduced? I want to acknowledge two Indian pulmonologists. I myself have learned from their work. So I want to acknowledge them on this open platform who have done groundbreaking work in oscillometry inside the last decade. Dr. Shaibal Maitra from Kolkata, Dr. Sandeep Salvi from Pune. Due to groundbreaking work, not only in India but worldwide, it has been scientifically proven, published, that data captured by oscillometry correlates with the data measured by spirometry with respect to age, gender, biometrics, race, and disease symptomatology. 1995, chest, FOT versus spirometry to assess bronchodilation in patients with asthma and COPD. 2004, ERJ, detection of expiratory flow limitation in COPD using FOT. 2007, Elsevier respiratory medicine, utility of FOT in assessing bronchodilator responsiveness in patients with asthma. So 95, 2004, 2007, and I have quoted the highest index factor respiratory journals, mind you. Not some out of the way, not so popular journal. Chest, ERJ, Elsevier respiratory, these are, let's say, one of the highest impact factor journals. But in 2020, we were forced to stop doing spirometry due to a very bad pandemic where we had to cover our mouth, cover our nose, isolate, social distance, no cuffing, no aerosol generation, cuff hygiene, etc., etc., etc. So in 2020, from Gangaram Hospital, a group of pediatricians, they published that impulse oscillometry is a reasonable option to monitor lung functions in the era of COVID-19 pandemic. They actually used some gamma camera technology where they showed that aerosol generation by this is minuscule and it does not pose any risk of spread of infection. So now let's come to how soon. The research was accumulating from the 1990s. But there was no push until maybe spirometry had to be stopped for some unforeseen reason. When we have a relatively inexpensive and easy to perform maneuver, why would we want to think about a costlier device? So maybe until we were forced from doing spirometry that no, you cannot do a spirometry anymore. Maybe we did not feel the need of doing some other test, a proxy marker. So now that the world is opening up after, after COVID, maybe oscillometry finally start replacing spirometry. So it's very soon because almost we can say that we are back to near normal. Flights have started, international flights, vacations, movies, music shows, sports. Physical conferences, we all had a wonderful NAPCON, wonderful NATCON recently. So that the world is opening up after COVID, maybe oscillometry finally start replacing spirometry. And mind you, our own platform CCI has already done four physical meetings after COVID since 2021. So why not? So I do believe that oscillometry will replace spirometry very soon as fast as this gentleman throws the javelin. But let me criticize my stance before Nitin sir starts attacking my feeble arguments or bold arguments that the time will say. A very big limitation of oscillometry is fitness for surgery. Spirometry is most essential part of pre anesthetist checkup, but whether the pre-op patient who needs a fitness be able to perform the spirometry accurately is a question. But up till now, oscillometry cannot give proxy measures of FEV1 as a replacement for spirometry in fitness for surgery cases. 
But if that pre-op patient is unable to perform spirometry properly, we may need to look beyond spirometry for any other test, but not oscillometry, yes. And definitely a very big limitation or argument against oscillometry will be the cost. The machine is costly. So obviously the test will be costly. If the machine is costly, every practitioner might not be able to afford it. If the test is costly, every patient who could afford a spirometry easily might not be able to afford that oscillometry. So my arguments in a nutshell, pulmonary medicine is an independent subject with maybe fastest growth. Pulmonary function testing is an integral part of pulmonary diagnostics. I cannot diagnose, I should not diagnose a pulmonary disease without a pulmonary function testing. The finer my diagnostics is, the better will my diagnostic and patient's outcome. Every better patient of a chronic disease diagnosed early and accurately will be a new advocate for better pulmonary medicine facilities. So every patient I treat is not only helping my profession, it's also helping my subject to grow better. So that's why we should always use this oscillometry, which has many advantages over the conventional spirometry, just like electric vehicles will have many advantages over the conventional petrol or diesel vehicles. But everything said and done, I would want to acknowledge today's debate to the, the revered Dr. Hachisan, the inventor of the spirometry or first PFT, without which we could not be having this debate today. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the time. I would now request Rajesh sir and Nitin sir to kindly take over. Hi, dear friends. It is great that the man from Ranchi, Dr. Atri, has given you the fascinating knowledge and he has put oscillometry in such a grand light that you all must be already convinced that oscillometry is going to replace pyrometry very soon. But I am going to put forward some very interesting information for you, which will tilt you in the other way. And I'll start with the story where it when it started. And I'm going to ask you a question, when did it really start? It was fairly old and Humphrey Davy was one of the people who started inventing this particular gadget, which today we haven't forgotten. And John Hutchinson, very rightly, he actually was an English surgeon who was duly credited for the words pyrometry and the vital capacity and those terms, pyrometry and vital capacity even stand today. Uh, as they are. So the question to you is, how old is the true history of spirometry is? Is it about 175 year old? Is it 375 year old? Is it 25 year old? Or is it 50 year old? Give it a thought for a second and I'll give you the answer. And the answer is actually that it's about 375 year olds in making and John Hutchinson got credited for this word 175 years ago. So something which has been almost as ancient has a lot of history and a lot of work which has gone into it. At that time, of course, you all remember that they were using an air column which was there in a bubble bath or a water bath. I'm sorry, not the bubble bath, the water bath. And that, you know, the drum would move upwards, so the chain and that then to go into the pen and then write on this. And there was a rotating drum. So this kind of measurement was available. So person blew from here and then these values were recorded on this graph. That was the way a spirometry worked. I hope that today's spirometers are really wonderful. But when Atri is saying that spirometry is about to become obsolete, he is not referring to about this particular instrument on the right uh, side of the screen. If he's saying about that, no problems. But if he's talking about a new age spirometer, I have, I very strongly oppose that idea that it's far from absolute. And here are my reasons one by one. So let's put this 
uh, graph uh, which was written by two Indian authors into a context and first chew this up. Basically, it is the basic principle here is that a flow sensor or a volume displacement on which the spirometry works and it measures the flow rate and the lung volumes. This is the bo bottom line and very, very important bottom line. Whereas the FOT or an IOS, it uses the force oscillations of a single frequency sound waves in a right? FOT or the impulses of multiple frequency sound waves are pushed into the lung as pressure waves to measure respiratory resistance and reactance. Most importantly, what we start getting with the spirometry is volumes or flows, and that's the critical part. And then you'll start getting some alien sounding figures, which are expressed as ZRS, RRS, XRS, uh, resonant frequency and an area under reactance, all sound Greek and Latin to start with, because we haven't had enough time with these terminologies. The advantage with spirometry is that, or the disadvantage you might call it, is a lot of patient cooperation needed. Whereas IOS or FOT can be done on a person who's not so cooperative or, or somebody who's just doing tidal breathing, that is good enough. Essentially, it's a forced exhalation versus tidal breathing. But the variability with intra-subject variability with spirometry is as low as 3 to 5% when conducted well. Whereas with an FOT on IOS, even when conducted well, it is 5 to 15%. And that's something worth keeping in mind. Uh, you can not really pick up the central airway obstruction uh, with, uh, I mean, you can pick up it, pick it up better with IOS. And the peripheral obstruction is picked up more or less equally by both, both of them. The cutoff for a bronchodilator response, and this I'll keep coming back to you again and again, very well defined. It's 12% or more for FEV1 and 20% for more or FEV1 if I'm looking for what is called as a bronchoconstrictor response or a bronchoprovocation bronco, bronco provocation challenge. Whereas it's 40% for uh, R5 or X5 in the terms of IOS. And that is something worth keeping in mind. There is something to be argued about uh, IOS in the terms of the fact that it gives you some idea about mechanics, whereas this is mainly to do with volumes and flows. But the methodology is much, much more robust and standardized. And most importantly, it has availability of abundant availability of robust reference values. So this is a very sort of non-biased look into the entire scenario. And now we'll move towards in, in front with, I'll move in ahead with my argument in against uh, IO, uh, IOS completely replacing spirometry very soon, which is not gonna happen at all, according to me in the next few decades. And why? Volumes and flow rates are the critical endpoints as of today. There is no doubt about that. Howsoever labor intensive it is, it is forced, but at the same time, it delivers your FVC, your FEV1, your PFR, exact volumes and flows are recorded and delivered to you. There is no confusion on that. For example, I go to Hyderabad, Paradise Biryani. I buy it in the terms of a per plate or a per kilo, or shall I just stand in front of Paradise and just have that khushbu for 15 minutes and I'm happy with it. I'm sure a sensible man will buy it in volumes because the volumes matter and the volumes matter there. Another example, I have wonderful mangoes here. Will I be happy to get that aroma of the mangoes and pay for them? Or will I pay for them in a dozen or whatever that thing is? So I think I'll look for the actual volumes and I'll try and convince you with a simple example. The lung function is all about volumes and the volumes cannot be replaced by any other parameter. Typically, if you look at this spirometry report, the first vital capacity is 3 liters, FEV1 is 2.1 liters. FEV1 change is by about 300 cc and 20%. This is the post bronchodilator change. Now, the volumes here, while they are telling me the real true story, the typical IOS report would be something like R5 is 0.78, it's about 200% of the normal. R5 minus R20 is around 40%. So I have peripheral obstruction. But this 
shows me a mere direction in favor of obstruction but it could be a fvc the as low as 0.5 liters on a force vital capacity as high as 3.5 liters and i wouldn't know that unless until i actually did a spirometry and therefore this is an incomplete picture it's a direction in favor of obstruction it it picks up more sensitively but at the same time it doesn't tell me the entire picture which i'm interested in when i'm looking at the lung functions this is of course a lovely looking lady she very shapely one and I agree that the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder but when this lovely shapely lady needs a dress she has to go for actual measurements and i'm sure you can read those numbers they are the actual numbers just having a similar shape would not mean means that the numbers are reached and the dress would never fit if it is imaginary in the terms of in that direction and not giving me the exact volumes or specifications so that's how the argument should be in favor of it more importantly we have so many applications of spirometry for example the spir concept of spirometric lung age which was actually first described uh, in the fletcher chart and we have seen that yes somebody who is having uh, at 100% of the fvc at the age of 25 with the age gradually declines so the spirometric lung age would put them somebody who is not susceptible will gradually go down somebody who is a susceptible smoker will rapidly go down somebody who stops will slow down the progression all this is definable and showable unless until i don't know the volumes i will never be able to show my patient and very importantly one out of 14 patients were shown that the lungs are aging prematurely quit smoking now this kind of an important information will be missed if i'm only looking at the great oscillometry and not looking at the spirometry either a spirometry or a body box will give me the best estimate of the volumes and therefore will define the spirometric lung age for a smoker so that's that's one more argument in favor now you have a patient for a surgical fitness i'll say okay the r5 is raised the ax is very highly raised and i am going to declare this patient unfit for surgery does that make any sense whatever the percentage is it is 300% of the normal and ax is 17 does that make sense no no it doesn't because i need to define a fvc which is less than 70% predicted for abdominal surgeries less than 2 liters or less than 70% for thoracic surgeries so on and so forth so you would need volumes you would need for a pneumonectomy less than 2 liter is necessary or other less than 2 liter will put the person at a higher risk less than 1 liter for a lobectomy will put the person at a higher risk so on and so forth so once again you can't do without the volumes you can't do without the flows in the truest sense of the word so and then the next problem and the next challenge is being a young procedure it's a wonderful procedure let me tell you that ios i am using a lot and i i call it a game changer rather than a replacer for a uh, spirometry i think it adds immense value to spirometry but it doesn't replace spirometry in my mind because even such for such a young procedure we have so little data on the reversibility criteria for example so you are looking at say for r5 resistance so respiratory resistance in in general if it reduces by minus 20 or minus 25% again two different percentages and some people will say even 40% which we saw later then the small airway index minus 0.04 kilopascal per second per liter or re resonance, resonance frequency reducing by 20% reactance area reducing by 40% these are the ones which have been given by the manufacturer of via um, uh, or uh, or the jager one so or for a 40 they will be different again and we'll come to that point also so the reversibility criteria for ios are not so well tightly defined as yet and it will take years possibly some decades to reach there so that's going to be another one flow versus volume and volume versus time graphs and that is another very important component of a spirometry it's not about numbers but the shapes and those shapes give you very easily recognizable patterns for different lung diseases and that's something which is very important i am sure all of you know that when something like this serious flow limitation a code out kind of a 
uh, it's a pure obstructive disease no doubt about it it's rising slowly it's trying to reach the fvc predicted fvc but it is rising slowly you can make out just by looking either at the flow volume loop or the volume time loop you know it's an obstructive lung disease and similarly the miniature curve of a normal would be a restrictive this will be a normal this will be the obstruction again so it's so easy to pick them up if it's a box type obstruction this is a fixed upper airway this will be the variable extra thoracic and this will be seen in neuromuscular weakness so so many uh, diseases could be just picked up visually by looking at the curves of the spirometry if your eyes are trained to it of course ios also get offers patterns so there'll be an argument in favor of it and uh, atri will be very fond of these lines but do they really make much sense this is normal i am seeing two lines and unless until i really know how those lines are traveling i wouldn't realistically know what's happening this is distal obstruction versus this is proximal obstruction and i don't make great sense there and and for restriction it is not as good in any case it has been agreed that the restriction once again if you look at the curve of restriction it's a miniature curve here here is an obstruction which we already uh, shows a flow limitation and a curved out line and this is your typical box type obstruction so all these patterns which are so very easily identifiable and all of us for decades are familiarized with these parameters now we have the job of getting familiarized with these lines sometimes they are obvious sometimes they are not and it will take some time for us to learn them also so that is that is going to be a little bit of a struggle and bit of a learning curve for all of us it's not going to happen suddenly so i would at this point in time stay for identifying the patterns with the spirometry rather than with the impulse oscillometry I, of course it's a great tool it will be and i'll i'll, I'll also say good things about spiro uh, oscillometry but the volumes are missing of course we are right now not discussing the body box so the so called you know this was something from the historical standpoint at that time they were com calling it complemental layer tidal layer reserve layer residual layer and today we know we are describing them in the in the terms of the total lung capacity vital capacity inspiratory capacity functional residual capacity so on and so forth but the volumes make a lot of difference and that is missing completely in the oscillometry our the good old or the standardized definition of a severity of a copd will be gold stage 1 when the fev1 is more than 80% so on and so forth i'm not going to teach you about that but at the same time that definition is not based on r5 it's not based on ax at this point in time we don't have that kind of data so simply that is worth remembering and we can and we are able to micro dissect our curves and also the inspiration comes into the play in a big way in this whole scenario of doing spirometry and that spirometry adds a immense value in the terms of volumes and the flows and that's going to be important for oscillometry one of the biggest problems is that there is a lack of reference values and extensive evaluation over different disease conditions is not yet available wherever uh, this will change with time i'm sure about it but at the same time we need time it's a young technology and we'll need more time so simply i'm saying this is not today is not the time to talk about it and i doubt whether even in future the volumes will be completely replaced by figures which are in the terms of resistance increase 200% 300% i don't think i'm not very convinced on that part the other very important and something which will make a huge impact on a country like india is a huge cost difference in the equipment cost whatever you are charging to the patient is your call but at the same time the cost instrument cost is tremendously different and therefore and the lack of portability you can't take it into the field and field studies cannot be easily conducted with it in a country like india where in two tier cities uh, third tier uh, taluka places or smaller townships we have spirometers reaching just now and at the end we are still wondering and breaking our heads into how to get on top of a quality spirometry all of a sudden if you say okay you have to come to a tertiary center and nothing else will be available to these places it is not going to make sense and therefore once again i will very strongly argue that 
oscillometry is not yet ready for prime time first line usage it will take a lot of time for that that cost has to come dramatically down and then we will talk business another logic here is there is no established coherence values for children it is most useful we all know we are convinced on that that's brilliant for children the coherence at 5 hertz ideally should be 0.8 and coherence at 20 hertz should be 0.9 or 1 and 1 these values are for adults and so far there are no validated values for children so where we are using and i am very proud to say that i have used it in a 3 year old but 3 year old i did not have the coherence values so can i really be validating it as a final thing we are not sure and this coherence can be affected by our improper technique swallowing glottic closure obstruction of the airflow by tongue or irregular breathing and all these things are very very possible in children so we have to be taking it with a pinch of salt whatever the final value that particular test is giving me it is telling me that there is resistance and i am convinced that yes there is obstruction but i am not 100% sure because i don't have the coherence values for children that is going to be as things which is worth keeping in mind now in addition to this there are few other caveats and very importantly fot either or ios are far from perfect because females had this is one of the studies which i am quoting females had higher resistance and lower reactant reactance values than men r5 minus r20 ax and resonant frequency showed age related changes x5 values showed age related changes only in the females body weight was a significant predictor of most ios parameters in females but not in males so it did not really match there and obesity was shown to be a cause of an elevation in x5 and ax values in fact my experience with limited experience of 8 or 9 months with ios is that i find it difficult in children because the predicted resistance values are very high in fact they are high as high as 1 and many of our children are actually recording 0.8 or 0.9 and if that is the story then i'm i'm not really able to document obstruction even when it is there and it is clinically suspected i'm not able to document it so that's going to be the limitation uh, and as of course the child grows and it goes into adult it is it correlates beautifully but in a very small child it doesn't correlate very well so that's going to be the problem so there's up to 10 years we keep struggling and that's something which is worth keeping in mind and sorry the this came a little uh, up and uh, upside down so 11 was before 10 so don't mind that but fot and ios are different and give different end results and this is something worth taking into consideration that if you are using a force oscillometry versus a uh impulse oscillometry they are going to be different this is one study by anemura here where the resistance values varied up to 10% from the estimated values in both the devices additionally there was a difference in frequency dependence for resistance between the devices sometimes it was f, f um, i mean r10 sometimes it's r15 with impulse uh, impulse it was always r20 the reactance values were higher with f40 than ios so clearly and this was the conclusion by the author that more studies are required to establish reliable device specific predicted values so we are not yet sorted out in this particular game also so to conclude my argument i am convinced at this point in time that the ios is a wonderful new young technology it's very very promising it's great in small children and old debilitated patients but has many pending issues right from the idea of not having coherence values sorted out not having standardized reproducible i mean uh, uh, i mean reversibility criteria not having pronko constrictor response criteria which are very well defined the cost needs to come down dramatically for it to be accessible for majority of the indian population at present it's a great complementary tool for spirometry and the only one thing which i found ax uh, that is the area under reactance in select situation is a very nice reflection of air trapping in obstructive airway uh, scenarios and this tells you a lot something what say a body pathogen graph would do but all said and done 
volume based and flow based spirometry and body box are still here to stay and they will hold the critical stent center stage position in the lung function assessment for decades to come whatever my opponent has said i think i have nullified it adequately of course children and very old debilitated patients are who are not able to perform the volume based studies well at all yes it will add there it will add ios will add information to a spirometry if it's done concurrently and that is how we are practicing at this point in time today so in a nutshell the answer to the question whether oscillometry will replace spirometry soon the answer is an absolute big resounding no thank you very much So I think it is now really getting interesting with the two stalwarts have just put their arguments and it is really getting interested. So I have I have found that Dr. Nitin has also given some I think points, but uh, there are some instruments. So it depends on which instruments you are using. And as he has said that of course this is an older thing, but of course we got new instruments of oscillometry coming and and also newer instrument of of PFT machines coming up. So we have this what modifications. Which he has said are not there for ismal coherence for children and all these things, but I will leave it to Dr. Atri being being I think a referee. I think I should I should handle Dr. Uh, Atri for I think uh, will give five five minutes of rebuttals to each each one of you, and then we will go for just final arguments and validity of it. Uh, I would give it to Atri if you are ready, and then after that uh, maybe I'll give again five minutes to Dr. Nidin to what you have said. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Nitin sir. And Nitin sir is a wonderful poet, very eloquent. Every day when I open Facebook in the morning, first thing I search whether Nitin sir has posted a new poem or not. And when Nitin sir was speaking, means his eloquence was hypnotizing me, and I was convinced that tomorrow perhaps I will go and sell my oscillometry in <laughs> Flipkart, Ola, or OLX, whatever, and again get back three spirometries. But then I wondered, wait a minute. Let me just read between the lines what Nathan sir is telling, and I was able to some read something between the lines, and let me try to present thing. When we are talking regarding spirometry and oscillometry, we would all agree that maybe the bulk of practice of pulmonologist comes from obstructive airway diseases or airway diseases. So any pulmonologist who is able to gauge the airway better is going to be a much more successful professional and will definitely help in growth of the subject better. For example, once upon a time, the treatment of asthma was nothing. They used to do all sorts of prayers, seances and various things. Then we discovered some tablets, some leaves, herbal medication, obviously steroids. Then we came to inhaler and now there is something known as molecular biology in asthma. The talk about molecular biology in asthma. So treatment advances as the understanding of the diseases advances. Let's come to COPD. One point of time COPD was something very nihilistic. That if someone has COPD, the, pardon me speaking in Hindi, Isko to saas phulta rahega, isko to kabhi aaram nahi milega, ye tadap tadap kar mare. But then, as we were able to measure COPD better, not in spirometry, even via CT scan, then the right heart function, some people even did some VQ scanning in COPD, gamma camera studies in COPD. We were able to understand the pathologies better. And the same gold, which had painted a nihilistic approach, told that no, COPD is a treatable disease. And just like there is a step up, step down concept in asthma, a step down concept first time came in COPD, that if someone has stable symptoms for six months, you can actually think of stepping down the treatment. So any disease over time, evolves basically due to our understanding, basically due to advancement of diagnostic. Until there is advancement of diagnostic, we shall not be able to evolve. For example, 
artificial intelligence in CT scan go beyond the traditional resolutions of slicing. Earlier, we used to tell that this city is of so many slices, this city of so many slices. Nowadays, we are coming to know that there is something known as artificial intelligence, which obviates the slices at all and gives us much better algorithms, prediction models. Uh, Nitin sir gave a wonderful example regarding biryani, whether you want to purchase by the kilo or whether you want to purchase by the aroma. I would want to say, as technology is advancing, we must be able to understand that there may be a newer technology to measure the same disease via a different unit. Means, what was, let's say, weight of the biryani may be measured not by the traditional weighing machine, but by something else, but give us curate estimate regarding the existing weight, either it be biryani or it be mangoes. That goes for oscillometry for measurement of the behavior of the airways. As per a comparison between the two, I would want to say that both the peripheral airways as well as the reversibility parameters and the provocation parameters have been proved to be much more better shown by the oscillometry and this has also been published in reported paper that peripheral obstruction, reversibility, better by oscillometry, including reference values. Lung age in COPD, Fletcher Pato curve, we all used to see that. But let me tell you, a oscillometry can pick up a COPD much earlier, when there may be some damage in the smaller airways, or when there may be some very early increase in the R5 or R20. Why I am telling this? Majority of the COPD patients, if we go by spirometry lung aging or the Fletcher Peto curve going down, they are in stage 3 or stage 4, sorry, stage group C or group D, not in group A or group B. But oscillometry may actually help us in getting this group A, group B COPD where permanent damage is not yet set in and we may able to risk reduction by removing smoking and giving them good dual bronchodilators, which we are unable to give because maybe the first presentation of the patient is an exacerbation or very severe symptoms. So oscillometry goes in a different way than the Fletcher Pitto curve, but gives us a earlier prediction in the COPD patient. If we come to the next argument given by sir, that spirometry is something very beautiful regarding the graphs. That just by looking at the graphs, we can able to tell whether this is obstruction, whether this is a reversibility, whether this is a restriction or whether the graph is illegal and we need to perform again. What I want to say is, and I would share my screen very briefly to show a slide. These are the airway oscillometry key patterns. How does the normal look like? How does a central obstruction look like? How does a peripheral obstruction look like? What happens when there is a small airway obstruction? What happens when there is a ventilation defect? So it is not just regarding the value of R5, R20, but it is also about looking at the curve. And when I started doing more and more oscillometry, Nowadays, when I look at the curve, I can actually gauge that what is the defect and then maybe I look at the values. But first I see the curve, just like experienced people in spirometry first look at the curve. So similarly for oscillometry also, the curves are very well defined and it can be done. I have ended my screen share and what I want to tell is about like Nitin sir expressed a concern that maybe we need to relearn all these values again. What happens when there was non-intervention pulmonology, we had wonderful pulmonologists, but they were not trained in intervention pulmonology for the simple reason that when they were doing MD or DNB, the technology was not there. But when bronchoscopy, thoracoscopy came, obviously, who were the professors? They learned it and they are doing it fantastically. EBUS. It's not about just the only new MD, DNB, DM pass out is doing EBUS. Someone who may be a senior 20 years is enthusiastically learning EBUS and doing good EBUS. So a new technology comes. We should be ready to train ourselves, accept its role and put it in its place. 
For example, COVID. It was not in my MBBS syllabus. That's no excuse for me to learn COVID when I'm in practice and when it suddenly came out of the blue. Hmm. Severity of obstruction, sir had presented that in COPD, there is something gold one, gold two, gold three, gold four. I would want to tell there has been a published study that even in oscillometry, there is a severity of obstruction with respect to R5, less than 140%, 140 to 200%, 200 to 350%, and greater than 350%. So definitely in oscillometry also, we are going about that. Yeah, one concern I would also share that maybe the Indian reference values are not yet standardized. But I would want to present in this open platform for sake of increasing our knowledge on this subject. There is something known as the ARISE network, which is a data sharing network by Indian pulmonologists and pediatricians and physiologists who are doing oscillometry to collate our data, share our data, spirometry versus oscillometry versus diffusion versus pheno. If you have these machines at your clinic so that we can create that Indian reference, Indian registry. So it may not be there today, but the network for data sharing is there. And I'm sure very soon, again, my word, very soon, this reference will definitely come. I would not want to go on again and again, but the last point, sir had told an oscillometry is not feasible on the field. I would want to counteract this, that a FOT plus laptop is more feasible in a field or a health camp compared to a spirometry, which takes much more time than a spirometry. Sorry, which, which the spirometry will take much more time than that FOT plus laptop. So if you are in a field in a camp, I would say FOT plus laptop better than a spirometry. Best thing about, spy, uh, spy, best thing about oscillometry here is you don't need to train that technician. The machine will do its job. And regarding coherence, last point, I was looking into literature just day before yesterday. Coherence in children, uh, the acceptable values are between frequencies 19 to 43 hertz. Below 15 hertz, coherence in children is not yet there. 19 to 43 hertz, there is a coherence in children. And two arguments which I would strongly agree with Nitin, sir. I would never use an oscillometry for PAC fitness and definitely cost of the machine. Now, that is something for economists and health policy makers, but cost of the machine should not deter us for giving a better technology, better test to the patient. I would want to rest my case. No rebuttals further. Thank you. So, as is the norm, uh, we will also give some time for Dr. Nitin to answer this uh, argument that he has given against your against, against the motion. And... Uh, you can take five minutes or more and then we can have some arguments and we can have some questions which have come from audience which will also further clear uh, actually the, the doubts so over to dr nitin for a quick rebuttal as 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 all of us do uh, thanks rajesh as all of us do we keep learning and you know the FOT being portable is something very good in fact i learned another very important thing from uh, uh, from my opponent uh, a three the man from Ranchi who is as good as Dhoni in his uh, <laughs> batting. But that uh, in smokers, it could be a great uh, tool to use impulse oscillatory early because it is going to convince them earlier to give it up. That, that can be a great thing. But let me start countering uh, whatever he has said as best as I can. I have no disagreement about the choice of cases that he is doing, you know, very elderly, very young. There is no problem with that. But imagine the kind of penetration this particular technology has. For example, spirometry, where what is the level of penetration in the total obstructive airway disease scenario across the country? And that kind of a penetration that the spirometry has is max to max 5%, maybe 10% in the cities. That's it. So good 95 to uh, 90 to 95% of the people have never undergone even a spirometry. And we have been you know, uh, drying our throats uh, absolutely dry and you know, hoarse voices that you must accept spirometry. All of a sudden, now we are going to take a stand 
that no 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 whatever we were talking for last 30 years was not necessary now we have impulse oscillometry and we will sell you up oscillometry only thing is it's about 10 times costlier and well you will not afford it and we will not in any case it was not reaching you it will not reach you at all forget about uh, anybody ever undergoing uh, impulse oscillometry because it is completely horribly horrendously expensive i think that's that's something which is not going to work for the majority of the scenario immediately and therefore the word very important you know i am i am i have bought uh, impulse in my hay i have i have a cardiopulmonary exercise testing i am no i my, my cardiopulmonary exercise testing is lying idle but the the impulse is going roaring absolutely for every spirometry i do i do an impulse along with it but this is for a tertiary care center not for a immediate mass consumption and a total replacement of technology that will that is far far away from the indian scenario at this point in time it is a great tool to fill all the gaps that spirometry leaves i am totally convinced that this is a superior technology it is better in the sense of sensitivity it adds tremendous value but it most importantly it fills all the gaps almost all the gaps that spirometry leaves behind i think a few more things which are very important is that coughing uh, uh, somewhere atri said coughing is allowed during impulse oscillometry no somebody coughs that that the, the, the becomes invalid so somebody who is continuously coughing you cannot be realistically validating that particular report for 30 seconds it has to be a cough he said that pandemic situations will bring out a tool like spirometry pandemic situation the whole country went broke and a man like me who was using spirometry and body plethysmography went on to peak expiratory flow rate because that was the cheapest and the safest thing to practice so pfr for asthma monitoring become a better tool during the pandemic scenario i could not imagine a 25 30 lakh rupees worth instrument being bought in the pandemic scenario where the aerosol generation is lesser but not zero so i think somebody who is breathing is generating a little bit of aerosol and that if you do electron microscopic uh, scanning or scintigraphic scanning you will come come to know that there are aerosol generation at all times so infectivity doesn't go to zero the the idea he also said that there is no reversibility when somebody drops the lung function in fact the reverse of reversibility is an also an excellent tool even in the spirometric sense that if somebody after forcing Three to uh, three to six times, and then drops on the post study. He's not actually gaining; he's actually dropping, but dropping significantly also will mean that he has an air, irritable airway and he's dropping. So it it, it becomes something similar to a bronco provocation, but not intentionally done bronco provocation. I absolutely agree that it reaches the peripheral airways much better. There is no doubt about it. The peripheral obstruction comes to you ready made on the platter, so there was no problem on that. with copd he said that we have reached the finality about the definition i don't think we have reached there and in restriction it surely fails so if i have for example the mixed patterns where a post tubercular copd so there is a lot of fibrosis related to healing of tuberculosis and then there is some obstruction it creates confusion i am not sure post transplant scenarios also i am not 100% sure whether If, unless until i am looking at a constrictive obliterative bronchiolitis i'll definitely better pick it up on us impulse oscillometry but if i have a fibrosis or a restriction which is coming up and it is subtle it is not going to be the tool that i will go to impulse at this point in time remains a very young technology very very young it 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 has its role to play in future there is no question about it but i think at this point in time if i say that it's going to immediately replace spirometry i think that statement is brave but not wise and uh, he i think the last parting shot i must take it with uh, at uh, atri he talked about the electrical vehicles versus this and there is a chance that you might be caught without power in the middle of the highway unless until you have a very very good battery but my dear atri so with that i'll conclude my rebuttal and uh, I, i we go back to rajesh sir and uh, the questions thank you sir so it's nice that we are having a nice combination of bowling and batting between dr atri and we are we are really enjoying it uh, to the hilt in fact 
and yes it happens with all the newer the, the, with all the newer technology that if you use it once and then of course it becomes a little bit more harder to use but then if you just get get down the user familiarize just like electric vehicles now people are increasing the mileage as you had just said so it may it may just go to the longer length so uh, there are some few points which which of course nitin has uh, uh, as told about also restrictive that that then that then we can't diagnose much uh, much of vestibular lung disease with also ground do you agree dr atri that we can't uh, use or there are some patterns which is to be learned uh, which can actually tell you much more about uh, this what is called restrictive pattern because there is also question on that the reaction of reactance will be more i think negative so i think there are there are also patterns for interstitial in fact they got intra breath analysis now so uh, in fact they can just yeah. be the respiratory and expiratory reactance and and also the what about the difference between them yeah. you'll be able to the go i us machine which i have i actually give that intra breath inspiratory and expiratory curve so so, i actually because that curve is so beautiful yes. that you can actually see that how much that balloon is expanded how far it is from the interstitium and those triangles if the triangles are smaller inside the parallel lines yes. that is lack of obstruction or lack of airway closure and if the triangles cross the parallel lines that is definitely obstruction or early airway closure so this reactance is something maybe which we have to experiment more do it in combination with a diffusion because until i do it in combination with a diffusion i won't be able to comment much on ild but what i have actually seen in some of my diagnosed hypersensitivity pneumonitis patient means not those very bad fibrotic ilds the x or reactance is more of the positive and as these patients improve with time the x comes towards the negative line two three patient of my hypersensitive pneumonitis i have been able to do a repeat oscillometry after three months where i found this trend that the reactance values over a period of time mind you not maybe one reading over a period of time will give a wonderful understanding of a follow up of ild patient why traditionally the follow up of ild was done by fvc but again when technique is an issue when oxygen dependency is an issue maybe the trend via uh, oscillometry would be better than the trend via the fvc which the patient could not be performed properly so I, i i tend to agree with you on this that ax is going to be that hidden area which we have to explore further both for obstructive as well as for restrictive and uh, over a period of time i think this is going to be an exciting territory because this is one thing which uh, i i i fondly use a term called aopd asthma becoming obstructive pulmonary disease and you know often we see people who are otherwise behaved as like asthma 25 30 years and you look at their ax and ax is 7 8 9 10 it is as high as that where it is normally should be less than 1 and if 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 you that is that actually gives us an idea that there is air trapping and i have tried to correlate it with the full body plethysmography in some some number of situations and it correlates beautifully the air trapping is something like 200% and you know the rv is as as 200% and that correlates very well with ax so i think we'll need data coming on this particular territory both for is restrictive as well as this but a very early restrictive disease of course i mean i still have to go for a full rbtlc i mean that will be definitely more okay. accurate and we still have to just keep on generating parallel data and the golden word as he has said is trending uh, i absolutely agree with the three that trending will create much better value on both all kinds of uh, pulmonary function technologies but more so on impulse oscillometry because i think we can create great value just by tidal breathing so it could be done at every sitting and if we are able to keep the cost down then for trending it will add a great value i have no object no objection to that absolutely yes within so i think i agree about the cost and all but if you just see that uh, because uh, we are just using this fot is since uh, so many years so first first of my instrument costed uh, about uh, more than about 20 lakhs right and now uh, I mean, the kind of is not targeting are only about one third so i think maybe the use if we use more oscillometry bring it down maybe yes. uh, yeah maybe i think volumes it will so come down all, yeah so it all happened also with spirometry in fact so i bought my yeah, yeah. first also spirometer which was from agar i actually bought it at 2.2 lakhs 
Now you would get a square battery which is about sixty seventy thousand, which would be a laptop. <laughs> but a laptop, this is I want to call a software and install it on a laptop, and it will just become your square meter. So I think I something think, like that of revolution is uh, will happen soon. About also the portability. I, I would look at a cost range of around maybe three lakhs to five lakhs for an iOS, a forty based iOS. So it will happen, sir. Because so that is more portable. It will happen also. because now portable now, and also about the portability. So yes, portability was an issue, in fact, and also the sound base that was also generated. For example, there is a question that I am, I am seeing in the question yeah, that, that loudness the, regarding loudness of the sound. So that was true, in fact. So we had that what we call loudspeaker, and then once we started, uh, although it was it was just meant for children, but then of these you get intimidated by the I mean sound itself. So I mean you couldn't convince basically the children who would just sit and just listen to that sound and then again do that. Uh, Ultimate, awesome, but it has all changed. In fact, so if you see the, uh, yeah. I mean, also newer instrument, there is just what you call yeah. vibrating mesh, and then you can only feel it once you just do. So this, so yeah. all this, all this, all this sound is only felt by the patient. Absolutely. Uh, so this is all about the it. newer winters. There is no sound at all. Yeah, yeah there is yeah, no sound. Winters, so it can be only felt no by patient. That's what I'm saying. Uh, winter, winters absolutely has no sound. We have, we have winters. Yeah. Set. So it can. So basically, only the. Only the patient would realize that our something is what we call vibrating inside inside his airways. Otherwise, of course, there is no sound. So all these technologies are rapidly changing, and hence only we are just debating this issue. Will it uh, will it replace soon? I think, uh, uh, Rajesh, Rajesh, as I as I see it, uh, debate creates uh, interaction, so, and the interaction yeah, yeah, yeah. the nuances. So it's not either a dead against or dead day. A three right. is my friend. Uh, I, I'm afraid of him because he's like Dhoni, but at the same time he's a, he's my friend. So I and so, we say that way. So yeah. I think uh, the debates are just poetry, <laughs> and that, yeah, I mean we have to take it in that spirit, absolutely. Correct. So uh, I think now that you are all both friends rather than debaters, we should now <laughs> take some questions from audience uh, yes, yes. as well, which is there to just give them a fair chance to be involved in this interesting also discussion. So I'll take it uh, from the. Actually, actually, just few of the questions that I would address, and uh, we will try to answer about it. There is first question which is there that basically permanently may show poor, poor, uh, poor resolutivity as F1 improvement only about 100 ml, but same patient IS RH as it may show improvement. So that is actually known factor three is that basically this yeah R power three and R power four. So yeah, so what we are doing is that we are just actually using the same dose that we use for resolutivity in the PFT. So I think maybe with oscillometry we'll have to just what to reduce reduce the doses for I think seeing uh, for 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 the seeing the diversity for example if you use four puff of I think salbutamol for doing oscillometry diversity it would go to about forty percent so I think maybe we can do it with less doses same is also with also bronchoprovocation uh, I mean test so that so of that uh, that would answer the question that it is much more sensitive than spirometry. Uh, If you do this oscillometry, what we call bronchoprovocation, you know the bronchodilation test, because we are just using the dose which we use in spirometry, which which of course may not be true for oscillometry. Uh, another question by also our friend uh, Dr. Chatterjee is that does the noise made by the machine old ones be also deterrent in doing for IS? Yes, so uh, as we said, these were the older older machines. Now basically you don't have such noise. Uh, another. Actually, pointer by some audiences that now we got a portable device. Yes, it is quite portable, and uh, these are, these have become like. Portable is portable, not not the Jagger iOS. So I think I would. Yeah, Jagger iOS is not, but F O T S are portable. Yes, yes. So I would be a three to also just clarify this what nomenclature which 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 is really played by you know our as I was saying in one of the groups, and uh, I'll share and then you can just see or. You got that slide of nomenclature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sure. I'm sure. You should really see because this is the most common question that is asked. That FOT is good and IS is good and ours is IIT FOT and this is this is a really yeah. uh, the so one that is original. Basically, when we talk about nomenclature, I would want to tell Atri. about comparison between various toothpaste. Atri, you can just maximize it. i would basically want to talk about the various types of selling toothpaste first salt was bad toothpaste was better then toothpaste with fluoride was bad finally they told that toothpaste with salt is better than toothpaste or salt alone 
so nomenclature is basically about selling a product as scientists we should use the term oscillometry or airway oscillometry let the companies who sell the machine use the term impulse oscillometry ios or forced oscillometry or fot ultimately both are using the same technology to measure the same thing for the same patient under the same conditions the r5 r20 ax z all should come same if it comes different then there is some error in either one of the machine so rather than encouraging the terms ios versus fot let's use the term oscillometry or aos airway oscillometry which is the correct term the device the companies who sell the devices obviously they would want to tell that fot better than ios or ios better than fot but ultimately oscillometry should win between this war of fot versus ios or spirometry will win the race <laughs> yeah so i think these are not technology to just produce the sound waves so if you if you just produce a sound wave of 5 hertz by a or b method it doesn't it doesn't matter because ultimately it's only 5 hertz that we are measuring right so either just what methodology is to just deliver the sound waves which were first by by then by then just fot but i don't like the term fot because here we are just say that but we don't want to have what is called forced forced experimental manner which happens in spirometry so it is not forced so i think i am very uh, i don't like to use the word fot for oscillometry because it is against the force that we are actually propagating oscillometry because it doesn't require any force so yeah. i think fot should not uh, fot term should not be used these are just what technology to produce sound waves and of course sound waves will be 5 hertz whether you use whether there is there is a different what the there's a different sources of it so i think that is what will just settle the problem of nomenclature which is which is asked by just many people okay so i think we are clear on that front uh, because a lot of questions are there what is what is what is the difference between fot is and is it is the reach to the bedside yes we have got oscillometers which you can do bedside you can do in your icu and uh, of course you can do it at the bedside even if patient is not then is not sitting uh, another is about the cough our patients actually are going from the icu to the room because mine mine is an ios so it, it can't really be taken but they are brought there on oxygen and they are doing it beautifully well yeah yeah because there is and the documentation of obstruction can be reached so even in right. a hospital setting you can just take the patient very yeah. happily there without a problem as long as he is stable on oxygen yeah, or but not even that has changed so you cannot you uh, I mean, there is there is a facility that you can bring the instrument to the patient's patient's yeah. bedside so these are the changes that has happened about the cough also is there so cough the patient patient will initiate cough if suppose you are just asking him to have a forced expiratory maneuver hmm. more than when you are asking him to just do a tidal volume uh, absolutely yeah. breathing so a tidal breathing would generate lesser cough than a forced expiratory maneuver yes. so that also takes care of that so this will be a better modality to use if suppose patient is having cough because he has to just take a breath for about 20 seconds so uh, that is that is actually time now required for doing the oscillometry in these in these portable devices because of the vibrating meshes that you uh, that they use as a source of sound so it is about 20 to 30 seconds and you are done and actually by that time patient uh, patient can hold cough if it is you know very severe yeah. only thing is that you should not put the tongue and of course which is there also in our that is very you important you know spirometry yes. that you should not put the tongue because that will change the coherence also coherence of it and also mm. if you are doing both the things then i think you should do first oscillometry and then the pft because it has been found that pft can change also the resistance and reactance of the airways mm. because of the force expiratory maneuver that force, yeah is, yeah which is a, yeah. a force expiratory maneuver is not a what you call a natural maneuver that we do in fact so actually measuring disease is against an artificial maneuver like a take deep breathing and blow it out uh, is 
I think very agreeable because there are many hyper reactive airway patients. They actually drop their lung function even despite giving them the bronchodilator. Correct. So I I call it reverse of reversibility. So that means I am dropping, and that also tells me that the airway is re- hyper reactive. But I think uh, therefore, if we are doing uh, both together, and we do it both together as a standard of care, very frankly. So uh, the impulse is done first, and then. Uh, or uh, airway oscillometry is done first, and then the spirometry automatically. The another question is that post expiratory, I think volume about twenty five to seventy five abnormal and impulse oscillometry normal. Is it is it possible? So it is. It is actually the reverse way. In fact, that it has been seen that if you do FPC at uh, at a lower lung volumes, like what we do MEF, MEF twenty five seventy five, that can get normal. You know some of the patients because oscillometry is very very sensitive for picking up uh, what you call small airway dysfunction. Small airway. Oscillometry yes. is, uh, I mean, what you call uh, selling point is only that it can it can it can irritate small airway. Yeah. Small airway. And so regarding that more, FEF, yeah. if yeah, spirometry is not done properly, that FEF twenty five by seventy five. Cannot be reliable also until that spirometry has been done properly. Yeah. So if I get a abnormal FEF and if I get a normal small airways in IOS or FOT, then I would say that because of sensitivity and independence of technique, I would trust the oscillometry report rather than that FEF by spirometry. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is that are the posers that I can see. If you can see much more on your screen, you can tell me. I think we have more done, more or less. Let us start from the top. Think, deep, sir, we have talked yeah, about. Yeah, so I think I think it's very just pretty covered. Uh, people are saying about the cost, uh, and they are asking about the cost in the best machine. So you can just personally message me or ask Doctor Atri or Doctor Nitin. Yeah, we would never name a machine in a yeah, open. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this thing, never you name just, uh, yeah, you can personally but you can personally ask our experience definitely rajesh sir nitin sir myself we have good experience with oscillometry you can ask our personally and the cost and pratibha uh, ma'am had asked regarding restrictive lung disease which we have already answered yeah so resistance will be normal and the reactance will be much more negative so this is the pattern so there are patterns as you were saying intra breath analysis so actually we have to learn this as we have learned if even by fpc and all these things because we not just very much familiar but then once you read this uh, oscillograms and once you do it you would be able to pick up the abnormality without even looking at the what we call absolute values so as so as i was telling there are some patterns that can be just picked up and then you can say whether it is what peripheral air obstruction or the you know, central or it is what we call a restricted lung disorder or interstitial lung disease even you know you know that is possible one thing that was not actually covered is about the lung Lung also transplant rejection. So now oscillometry has replaced uh, because spirometry for for the rejecting early early as a rejection of of lung. So that is that established fact now that uh, yeah. that that then the that lung transplant physicians are not are not relying on spirometry because that will be quite quite just late and then you can save the lung. So and this is also another thing that early cannot early be done. When the tests are not sorted out for you know very early, it can be used. Yeah, so that is almost replaced parametry. So we can have some conclusion, and I, what, yeah, one single. Con- I mean, it may be my concluding remark that could be. Easy. Yeah, yeah. So I one one single parameter. I learned spirometry. I mean, oscillometry fairly recently, and it's about a few, nearly a close to a year. And one thing which strikes you, and that's probably the simple take-home message: is you look at R five. and it is abnormal it is abnormal you know there is obstruction Friction. even in a child 3 year old 4 year old 5 year old and that's the beauty of oscillometry so when you need the proof of uh, you no know, concept obstruction i think that's extremely sensitive test it approaches 90 95% in most of the situations even in children and that is something which is the beauty and the power of impulse or um, or uh, i mean airway oscillometry i think with that i think i'll leave it to um, atri and atri do you have some concluding yeah. remarks before i make my yeah. my concluding message first of all i must learn spirometry religiously i must perform spirometry religiously before i start understanding oscillometry number 1 it is not possible that i do not know spirometry or i am not fluent in spirometry so i should try oscillometry it's not like that that's a wrong technique secondly 
secondly any new technology if i want to be in the best in my city or my state or my department i should try the every new technology i should be well versed in the new technology and then it should be my personal decision keeping in mind better patient care whether i would go with this new technology or whether i would want to prefer the pre existing technology for example gold standards are known to be replaced over time absolutely i think you lost the sound is it no we can hear you yeah 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 i can hear you are we can hear you uh much more uh, one question has come right so i think we can have some concluding remarks uh, Uh, so I'll start and then I'll, uh, concluding. Or Rajesh, finally you will take the final. Yeah, yeah. Finally, the referee. Okay, yeah. So I think uh, had was a wonderful session. I enjoyed doing it with Atri, uh, worthy opponent or even better opponent than me. There was no question about it. I as as as, as we have already cleared uh, the air that you know we are not sort of Keynes pyrometry or Keynes oscillometry. In fact, we have to come the combine these techniques together. In fact, today in my uh, prescription the thing I write is whether it is pyrometry plus iOS together or whether it is RV plus TLC with iOS together. So the person goes for a body box or this depending on what I am looking for, documenting the obstruction and whenever possible. try and do as many you know rv tlcs also along with spirometry because that is going to create the amount of air trapping and the kind of responsiveness particularly in the sector where you think the of there is no measurable change in the copd is one of the classic examples of it that there is no measurable change in the fev1 but then either the fvc changes that is what we and uh, dr chabra was discussing of late on the cci prime so that is one thing and uh, it could be the fvc change or it could be more dramatic change in the ax the ax going down over a period of time and a trending so i think that is again going to be very very interesting and exciting at the same time uh, let's not openly uh, sort of bash spirometry and say now we have a better technology and we are going to throw spirometry away please don't do that because most of the world most of the medical world today will continue to use spirometry so we say whenever uh, somebody comes to you say treat the spirometry with due respect whatever values are generated and then say i have something to add don't worry but at the same time i'm not going to replace it immediately so i think that that message should be clear because otherwise what will happen is uh, i mean it happens that the tertiary care has better setups and then they have all the technology and then therefore we sort of look down upon the uh, the secondary care people and they are doing good work and at the same time they might be sort of discouraged by that fact so it's not it's not just about that rat race uh, or you know showing something down so i am not in that business and i make it a point that in said the doctor has done his best there and we have something better in the terms of technology we have it recent it's not available everywhere so that's that statement is more logical and humble rather than sort of saying ye to bakwas hai aisa to nahi kahun so that is that is going to be important statement to make at all times uh, when we are particularly talking about spirometry because that is not going to go away for a substantial amount of time from the the practicing world it it will take time for the impulse to make its complete uh, you know uh, in the in the obstructive airway disease i feel impulse will take over but over a period of time not immediately excellent and uh, i congratulate and thank both the learned debaters dr nitin abhyankar and dr atri gangopad there for giving us a very insightful aspect on superiority of spirometry and oscillometry over one another both of them gave some valid data in favor of their respective stand and we have learned that spirometry is still the goal for gina and gold 
while oscillometry still need to be further chiseled and polished to make it gold. So today, both have one. Well, my take on the topic as a referee is that oscillometry over the past decade has really progressed from a marginal research tool to a technique that is sufficiently mature and clinically validated to warrant some widespread clinical applications. Clearly, one cannot expect oscillometry outcomes like oscillogram to feel familiar from day one in the same way that flow volume loops and FE even do it for us today. So oscillometry remains new and unknown to most clinicians. And as for any other new tool, some effort must be invested before a level of intimate familiarity can be achieved. However, I believe the potential benefit of quantitative small airway assessment during quiet breathing easily warrant this investment. And moreover, oscillometry devices are becoming now more smaller, cheaper, they are portable and are now more accessible to wide range of doctors and hence their patients. But what this technique needs and deserves most right now is wider application in those clinic and practices that routinely screen, diagnose and monitor patients suffering from diseases that may affect peripheral lung function such as asthma and COPD. Being the tidal breath based technique as we have been pointing out in this debate, pulmonary functions can be reliable, they can be measured with slightest efforts and minimal aerosol generation which makes oscillometry a safer and feasible alternate to spirometry, especially in vulnerable patients during the viral pandemic like the one that we are facing today. So although we cannot just junk spirometry as of now, but oscillometry has the potential to override popularity of the spirometry in very near future, as has been made out in this debate. So this is my judgment as a referee that if I may say so, that oscillometry will be the investigation to look up in the future and will be an alternative to at least spirometry. With this, uh, thank you CCI for giving me the opportunity to judge this hugely interesting debate. Thank you audience for being with us today. Take care all of you till we meet again, but bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.